Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon Mark 9, 30-40 Verses 30-32 And they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples, and said to them, The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask him. Here is the ruling passion of Christ which was always prominent throughout his life. Though he has just won a glorious victory over Satan, he does not stay to congratulate himself upon it, but his heart is still away to the cross where he is to suffer. He is thinking of his dying for his people, and longing until he shall have paid the ransom price for their redemption and set them free. Oh, the heights and depths of the love of Christ! See how steadfastly he sets his face to go to Jerusalem where he must die. Let us imitate him, let us think as much of his passion, now that it is over, as he thought of it before it was come. 33-34 and he came to Capernaum, and being in the house he asked them, What was it that you argued among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way they had argued among themselves who should be the greatest. It was a dreadful descent from communing with Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration to meeting the furious demon at the foot of the hill, but this looks like a far greater descent from the self-sacrifice of the divine. Master to the petty jealousies and self-seeking of his chosen servants. Oh, sometimes it makes our hearts sick when we have been almost lost in rapturous meditation, when we have been taken up well near to heaven in communion with the Lord, and then we have had to attend to some paltry squabble between two brothers or two sisters. It does seem such a terrible come down, yet our Lord and Master does not disdain thus to come down, for in tenderness he deals with these diseases of the sheep like a good shepherd. 35-37 And he sat down and called the twelve, and said to them, If any man desires to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them, and when he had taken him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receives me, and whoever shall receive me, receives not me, but him that sent me. Perhaps they were jealous of Peter. Possibly they were even more jealous of James and John. So the Lord gently pacifies them. He does not impatiently say, I cannot enter into your disputes, I cannot be worried with you. Oh, no. But he sits down and talks with them. I like that picture, it is almost as grand as the group of Christ and his disciples at the supper table in the upper room. He sat down and called the twelve, and said to them, If any man desires to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. That is the way they come to be first, by being willing to be last and the servant of all. This is the only way to get to the front of Christ's army, he who would be chief, must always be aiming at the rear rank, willing to do the most humble service and to be the lowest menial in his master's service. Only in this way can we rise. In Christ's kingdom, the way to go up is to go down. Sink self and you shall surely rise. 38. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in your name, and he follows not us, and we forbade him, because he follows not us. He did it, I dare say, in love to his master but not in the love of his master. He did it, no doubt, with the desire to honor his master, 
but he did not honor his master by what he did. 39, 40. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name, that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our side. Thus the master had to talk to his poor disciples after having conversed with Moses and Elijah. Again I say, what to come down it was from fellowship with the great lawgiver of Israel and with the mighty prophet of fire, to talk with these childish men who had fallen out among themselves and fallen out with other people. O oh blessed master, we may gladly hope that you will commune with us as you did with them. We may also trust that some poor sinner, even though the devil may be in him, may catch your eyes of pity and love, and that you may heal him.